If you follow the Warren Cole walkway to the point where river meets sea, there, at the mouth of the Whakatane River, lies the place where the famous Mātātu ancestress Wairaka performed New Zealand's very first act of women's independence and, consequently, gave Whakatane its name. Many centuries ago, when Mātātu Awaka arrived from Hawaii, the canoe was loosely anchored on Tokatapu, a rock located on the river mouth. The men made their way to shore to explore the new land, leaving the women in the safety, or indeed perceived safety, of the waka. As the hours passed, the tide came in and loosened the waka from its anchorage. The waka began to drift out of the safety of the harbour and towards the waves crashing on the rocks of the river bar. The women were petrified. What were they to do? Women were forbidden to control the waka. It was believed that to do so would be a transgression of tapu and expose them to supernatural evils. It was then that Wairaka, the daughter of Torua, the chief of the waka, realised the severity of the situation and made the courageous decision to defy the sacred restriction of tapu to save herself and the rest of the women on board. She looked skyward to the gods and exclaimed, Kia whakata ne which roughly translates to mean, give me the attributes and the entitlements of a man. She then took hold of the waka and guided it back towards the safety of the shore. Whaka tāne, to make into man. In doing so, the young maiden saved the waka, saved all on board, and ensured that her name and her story that tells of how our town was named would be perpetuated forevermore.